Let's have a quick look at the external anatomy of this dogfish shark. So a couple of um, obvious structures near the head. We have the eye here. The um, sort of beak area or the pointed area at the front of the face is called the rostrum. Okay, there's holes on either side of the face. Uh, here's one right here. Okay, that's the nostril. All right, um, the mouth obviously we can see right here and there's many rows of uh, very sharp pointed teeth okay um, on the side we have these little openings right here those are external gill slits okay so in this animal it actually um, it gets water through its mouth um, there are also some extra pores on the underside of the, the rostrum here, which water can enter while it's feeding and using its mouth. But otherwise, water enters the mouth, passes over the gills, and then exits through these external gill slits. Uh, we can also see, uh, roughly here, um, there's sort of a line running down the side of the body here. That's called a lateral line and the lateral line is used to detect uh, motion essentially or vibrations in the water so this is one way that it can detect its surroundings and its prey okay um, some other things we can sort of see I'll just point you the general vicinity if you look closely there are some large pores on the surface of the rostrum as well as on the side of the snout here um, those are where the ampullae of Lorenzini lie okay so these are specialized structures found in sharks that allow them to detect electromagnetic uh, currents so this is something that they can pick up um, from live animals basically when you move a muscle you're producing an electromagnetic current and they're able to detect that with these special structures at the front of their face so let's look at some of the fins uh, the ones near the sides on the chest or pectoral area, we have the pectoral fins. Uh, the one on the back here is called uh, the anterior dorsal fin because it's closer to the head. There is, if we go further down, a second dorsal fin. This is the posterior dorsal fin. We have then at the end the tail. This is the caudal fin. Okay, and then if we look at the side here sort of in the pelvis region we have a pelvic fin and in fact there's two here this animal is a male so you can see how the pelvic fin has been modified to have these uh, rigid structures here called claspers so those would only be found in males and that's involved in the act of copulation we'll just do a little tour of some of the internal anatomy here we'll start at the anterior end where we can see the heart right here Below the heart, we have this large three-lobed structure. There's a lobe, and here's a lobe right here. And as again, as we've seen in other animals, the largest organ tends to be the liver. So this is all liver. Um, and I'll just point out, um, you'll note as I'm touching it, my fingers are very oily, okay, and in fact the whole body cavity of this animal is really quite oily. And the reason for that is because the liver is secreting this oil. Um, when you look at the bony fish, one of the structures that's apparent in that animal is something called a swim bladder. And the swim bladder is basically um, a little membrane uh, surrounded sac that it can put gases into in order to um, achieve buoyancy or flotation in the water. The sharks do not have a swim bladder, so they have to be buoyant some other way. So they lighten their bodies, essentially, or increase their buoyancy by this um, oily secretion. So if you've ever tried to mix oil and water, you know that oil floats to the surface. So that's, that's how this works as well. So lots of oil makes the shark float, okay? Um, also with the liver, again, we, as we usually find, is the gallbladder, so that's this little greenish little sac attached here on this lobe, so that's the site of um, bile storage. Okay. Um, below the liver, then, we can find the stomach. This is all stomach right here, and on the bottom of the stomach, we have this large lobe here. This is a gland. This is the spleen. Okay. So the spleen is the site of red blood cell production, storage, and breakdown. If we follow the stomach, we come to this first coil right here, this little arch. That section is called the duodenum, okay, or duodenum. 
and this is a site of a lot of chemical breakdown okay and we know that we can see all these tubes connected here one is running from the gallbladder sending bile down here um, we also can find another gland right on top okay this little lobe right here this is the pancreas, part of the pancreas. So all of these digestive uh, enzymes and products are being sent into the duodenum where chemical breakdown is taking place. The next section is this um, rather short but very broad section. This is called the ileum. Okay, and the ileum is basically uh, performing the same function as the small intestine in other animals that we've seen. Now it looks very different. Rather than being very long and coiled, it's short and very broad. But if we open up the inside, I'm hoping you're going to be able to see this, um, you'll note that there are many uh, ridges and folds inside. And in fact, the other name for the ileum is the spiral valve. What's going on in here is there is tissue in a spiral shape running the entire length of the ileum which is increasing the surface area for nutrient absorption. So this spiral valve in the ileum is um, basically performing the same function as the many coils of small intestine. Below that we have the colon and the colon or is essentially the large intestine and that's the site um, where water is absorbed out leaving basically a solid feces there for um, ejection out the rectum and then through the cloaca. So I think that is it for the internal anatomy of the shark.